Hey guys, All in Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a wonderful Wednesday so far. Today we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update. We've got some interesting things to share with you. We're going to be hearing from the likes of eBay from their CEO saying that they are going to add crypto payments soon. I think it was yesterday actually I got an email from PayPal and the email title was interested in cryptocurrencies. So despite everything going on, we're still seeing crypto gain a lot of adoption and traction across the world. And in fact, the geopolitical events that are taking place right now have really highlighted just why crypto is so valuable. In a world where trust is an issue, decentralization is valuable because it essentially takes out a lot of that um, trust. You know, that's what this technology really does. It was Satoshi who came up with this kind of method to have an accounting system that is trust Lust, that anybody can help operate uh, and that is sort of apolitical and neutral in everything uh, and that's something important certainly with all the geopolitical events i know people get very heated and they're on you know they've got their kind of sides and their own bias uh, among all this but bitcoin really doesn't care um it is apolitical it has no dog in this fight uh, we know what's taking place right now is terrible uh, and of course you you can't be anything other than sympathetic but you've absolutely got to remember that bitcoin um is it's totally neutral um, and his actual facts, given everything that's happening right now, we're seeing MasterCard, Visa all shut down their services to Russia. Um, you just can't do that with Bitcoin. And that's one of the real strong points that it has. Now, yes, those um, companies uh, have reason to do what they're doing. But with Bitcoin, that though, you know, there isn't a company, one sole entity that can actually choose uh, and make that decision and thus cut off an entire population from uh, a monetary system that some of them actually depend on. It's really annoying me when I'm seeing people say, stop buying, um, you know, like farm goods from Russia. I didn't realize that this was a war on Russian farmers. Um, yes, you know, ultimately a country gets penalized by its leader. Uh, and that's kind of what we're seeing. But it's it's people, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there on both sides um, and ultimately, it's a horrible situation that I'm hoping comes to an end swiftly uh, and that we can come to some sort of an agreement between the sides and potentially move on. Um, but there's lots and lots going on. The Aussie Advisory Committee lists key factors for easing crypto adoption. So adoption is absolutely coming, guys. And it's something we've been trying to keep you guys motivated about and aware of during these kind of downward price um times essentially but bitcoin essentially could have how many times do i want to say essentially in one sentence it could have potentially formed a double bottom this is a draw from the crypto sniper the crypto sniper is an og in this game not just in the crypto markets but in markets across the board it's made very many accurate calls and this is a scenario that is essentially set out here where we see a double bottom for bitcoin and we see continuation to the upside taking us towards that sort of 56k onwards which absolutely could play out ladies and gentlemen there's lots of people speculating right now that crypto potentially is the answer to a lot of the problems um that are taking the taking place we know that there's been a lot of money funded for ukraine um and donated to ukraine in order to kind of combat what's taking place which is just another one of many use cases that crypto actually embodies so it is very interesting we are kind of running into a little bit of resistance here um, which is totally natural when you form these kind of W double bottoms. It's very natural that you will, at the kind of neckline of this structure, actually pull back to set up for more continuation. That is definitely what I am anticipating. Um, so market wrap, Bitcoin, ETH extend gains as equity markets continue to fall. We've been extremely tethered to the equity markets and really markets in general, we're seeing a little bit of a decoupling from that. And one thing I want to point out with the NASDAQ, and we know there is a lot of tech within the NASDAQ, this pullback here, 25%, was the worst pullback since March 2020. Crypto has actually held up relatively well given the circumstances, given that it's such a speculative and still deemed by many people um, a risky asset class. And it is, there's definitely an added element of risk here, given the kind of liquidity and, and the um, immaturity of the space as a whole. But it's actually held up relatively well. And we're seeing it sort of decouple. And actually, when we have a lot of the equities out there, such as the NASDAQ, 
We'll talk about oil in a second. I'll move that one along because this is something you've got to pay attention to. Certainly when you're looking at how well an economy is or isn't doing, oil prices actually play a huge factor in that because if oil prices go up, typically everything goes up. Oil is in everything, guys. Um, plastic, you name it. Um, also, the S&P was down yesterday along with the NASDAQ. Um, but Bitcoin actually saw a really strong rally off the back end of this. So are we starting to sort of decouple and actually show strength? Just like gold, you know, is Bitcoin sort of becoming a bit of a safe haven like some of your other um, safe havens like gold and the dollar out there? You know, are people running to this in times of um, panic? Certainly it would be or would have been wise for people within Russia, you know, to kind of speculate that their um, currency was going to see such a downward spike off the back end of this. And actually, if they had transferred their wealth into Bitcoin, it would have served them very well, given just the sort of devaluation we've seen with the ruble. Also, people within Ukraine, similar sort of situation. So it is really kind of, it's presenting itself as a bit of a lifeboat, which is great to see. And it's really exactly what Satoshi created Bitcoin for, a lifeboat from your fiat systems. I'm encouraging everybody, if you haven't already, and we said this on yesterday's video, please go and read the uh, Bitcoin white paper. You should be reading white papers of every single project that you're involved with, because that is the team telling you what they're doing and the kind of outlining the project. So we are seeing this kind of decoupling, which is fantastic to see. Um, you can see the S&P was down yesterday. The Nasdaq was down yesterday. FTSE opened up. Top 100 stock index actually opened up, but it had a down day yesterday. So it was decoupled yesterday. But of course, gaining a little bit of strength. These stocks have been hit actually relatively hard, to be honest with you, um, given everything. And, and like I say, crypto, given its nature, given the fact that it's supposed to be a significantly more volatile asset class, which it is, has actually held up quite well. Um, let's talk about oil quickly. Now, I, through getting into crypto, and this is one of the beautiful things that crypto has brought to the masses, is it's, it's spiked everybody's interest in economics. And I would argue that everybody needs a good understanding of economics. They don't teach you about money in school for a reason. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki said that, um, you know, and he's absolutely spot on. His book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is a great one. I've also played his board game, which was cash flow, which was uh, quite an interesting game. Certainly um, something that if you've got kids, you may want them to um, play that game. As it, you know, it sort of it teaches them a little bit about cash flow, which is very important. Um, but it's... You know, you, you have to understand finance to understand really the world because the world is largely now driven via finance. So people go, oh, it's, it's boring. It's not interesting. Yeah, the mainstream narrative that they give you of it is boring and potentially not interesting. But it is really the, um, f the money makes the world go around. And to understand how money is created, to understand how money works, to understand how an economy works is going to help you out massively in life. I'm going to create a list of books that are really good. A lot of them are OG books like Adam Smith's book. Um, the Wealth of Nations and a number of others um, to help you guys maybe gain a little bit of a, uh, you know, certainly it's helped me. And, and when you get that kind of clear picture of how the world works and how money works, things make a lot of sense. And you can often see why certain situations take place because there's always an agenda and a special interest um, behind things, similarly to what you're seeing today um, without going into too much detail on that. Um, so this, of course, is oil. Oil prices are over $108 a barrel. We saw a huge spike today, and this has everything to do with the fact that many BP, Shell, they're all pulling out of their um, deals with Russia, essentially. Um, and, you know, we know that Russia is a huge supplier of natural gas and oil. This is essentially, you know, now they're not going to be a viable source. Um, a country like Germany are quite dependent on it. Um, I can't remember the other one. I think it might have been Portugal, potentially. There's quite a few countries within Europe that are quite dependent on the oil um, generated from and the natural gases and resources generated from Russia. That option has now been essentially killed off. Um, so we are naturally going to have a sort of more of a supply shock than we already are seeing in the wake of rising prices across the board. I've certainly noticed my energy bills for a number of houses that I have have gone up. Um, and it's, you know, it, it, this strains the economy. So how do things, you know, when the economy, when people aren't fruitful, they're not spending as much. It applies to the shopkeeper, just like it applies to the equity and stock market. They're not putting as much money in. So this is all interesting, given the fact that we've got the Federal Reserve that are talking about up in interest rates. Well, can they really do that when the economy isn't doing too well and we've got soaring prices across the board? Um, because they're going to penalise people that have mortgages, anybody that has debt, which is the majority of people, by the way. The Philosopher's Stone really was the credit system. Um, well, certainly it's, 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 a, it's a way of looking at the Philosopher's Stone. 
Um, it, it's super interesting what's going on. You know, it, it's like living through history is literally being made as we're kind of stepping and progressing forward. Um, and Bitcoin and crypto is playing a role in that, which is something that we've always said. We see this as a technology that's going to embed and embody it, um, embed itself within the world. And you're starting to see that. So let's move on to some. It's interesting to see what the Fed are going to do on the back end of this. They may decide, OK, we've not actually got the dollar up here, so I'll bring it up very quickly. Yeah, you can see the dollar has done actually quite well off this, but it's it's not marginally high highs. You don't want to see marginally high highs, guys, because it shows that you're essentially you've got your sellers trying to do something um, or sorry, your buyers trying to push it up and they're failing um, with these marginally high highs. There's not a run that's kind of come out of this. So you could see a spill to the downside for this. This may be on the back end. Remember, it's this month where we've got the Fed meeting. This may be on the back end of them saying, OK, we're going to delay interest rates or we're only going to do a 25 percent, uh, 25 basis point percent interest rate hike, which essentially means that you know people are expecting 50 basis points which is just half a percent which i'm certainly expecting and sort of accounting for um, but this means that they're kind of acting a lot less hawkish than perhaps people were um thinking they might and certainly the equity markets are priced in the next bit of news that i have is ebay to add crypto payment options soon says ceo the economist giant aims to become the marketplace for millennials and gen z's um and given their rising interest in crypto a new payment option is to lure in their customer base all your companies are out there are going to facilitate cryptocurrency payment methods and the reason being is because they can profit from it when you look at the earnings one reason your banks are now going okay many banks in europe we've got banks across the world are now going we're actually going to offer crypto services so because they love crypto and they want decentralization and power to the people because they want to make money back to me telling you guys you should all get to grips with the monetary system how it works um and, and everything kind of associated with it because it's what makes the world go round, ladies and gentlemen and you're going to be far better off learning about it and having a decent understanding as long as it's the right one but then again who knows really what's right and wrong um of course we know what's right and wrong generally but you know you, you have to do um you have to scholarly look into something but again, the reason that these banks and everything are moving towards this is because they can make money off it. The Coinbase earnings were amazing in Q4. Uh, so were the likes of FTX. A lot of companies out there are making a lot of money off providing and facilitating um, crypto usage. Uh, and banks and, of course, businesses like eBay are going to follow suit. Still waiting for companies to start adding Bitcoin back onto the balance sheet. I still think that's coming. Experts, experts reject concerns Russia will use crypto to bypass sanctions. Totally unfounded. Who are these experts? Um, is what I want to know. Uh, totally unfounded. I mean, you know, you can found it's it, it's not unfounded by any stretch of the imagination to suggest that Russia may use a system that they can use. There's no permission that's needed to use it to bypass sanctions that have been put on them, mainly with in regards to currencies like not being able to use the US dollar and the um, um, pound. Um, so, of course, they can use it. It's, it's, it, it. These experts are completely not experts. Having a degree used to mean a lot once upon a time. And I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything nowadays. It absolutely does. And well done you for going and getting one. I, I um, anyway, we'll get, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get into that in a, in a, in a different video. But, you know, these experts have proven themselves time and time again to really not be experts and not have a clue what they're on about. So when you see experts in regards to crypto, take it with a grain of salt, guys, um, because nine times out of 10, it's absolute nonsense. Blockchain Association Jake Shavinsky uh, believes politicians should not be worried that Russia may use crypto to get around economic sanctions because it is not feasible at the scale required. They do have a point there in regards to there's not really the liquidity, but that doesn't mean that they could add the liquidity. So the thing is with crypto, um, in regards to the FX market, the FX market, I think has FX being the Forex market, we, you know, people love to say they're Forex traders, I can tell you now, the majority of people who are saying I make this much money on Forex, I do this, I do that, they don't, because if they were making that money, they wouldn't be trying to sell you a course and signals in it. That's a fact. Remember that it applies to crypto as well, guys, we don't try and sell you a thing in this video, or in my videos or on the channel. The only thing that I do have is a Cardano stake pool. And that is really because I wanted to take part in decentralizing the network and helping to run it 
as it's a project that I am quite passionate about and I think it's going to do very well. Um, the Forex market has, I think it's eight, seven, eight trillion dollars a day trades in volume. So that goes back and forth and trades around. Crypto is not even two trillion dollars in terms of overall market cap. So they have got a point in the sense that I don't know exactly what sort of volume from Russia is, but they certainly perhaps couldn't um, accommodate that. But that doesn't then mean that they couldn't, you know, go, okay, right, we're going to use crypto to, um, you know, sort of get around things. We're going to adopt it, you know, and, and, and if we can't send money to our family over somewhere else because Visa and MasterCard have shut us down, we might use, we might use Bitcoin. Um, so it'll, it, it's certainly interesting what's taking place right now. Is Bitcoin freedom money or a tool for sanction evaders? Oh, it's just so annoying to see that because why haven't they gone? Is Bitcoin a freedom money? And is it also a way to raise money to help combat or to help um, finance and donate to Ukraine? They've chosen to evade sanction. I mean, it's just like, you know, really? From Coindesk? <laughs> um is Bitcoin freedom? So Ukraine resistance has seen more than 30 million in direct crypto donations. That's amazing, guys. Uh, absolutely amazing that crypto is being used to do that. And it's probably one of the cheapest ways to actually send money and get those donations, which is huge. And a lot of your sort of, you know, Western unions and SWIFT systems may be kind of going, uh, you know, we're not too cool with this. Uh, war coincides with Bitcoin's highest real volume since early December. Investors are speculating that crypto will become increasingly important. Um, apolitical and trustless money in a time of es um, escalating geopolitical uncertainty, conflict and capital control. Absolutely. You know, this is what we're talking about in this video. It is certainly interesting. And here you have the Aussie Advisory Committee lists key factors for easing crypto adoption. It's coming, guys. Crypto adoption is already starting to seep in through the cracks, uh, and it is really going to excel potentially this year, as we've seen a lot of the infrastructure be put in uh, in the previous. That is all I have for you. This is a lot longer video than typically um, we usually put out. I'm still not really FOMOing into this market yet. I still think a lot of the uncertainty is still there. I don't think it's really gone away, and I think markets could be somewhat choppy. But ultimately, when you look at the crypto space as a whole, I don't see how you can be anything but bullish, certainly on the likes of Bitcoin, certainly on the likes of your big caps, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Terra, um, Solana, Cardano. You know, it, it, it's a bright future that we've got here, guys. Um, and right now, we're just experiencing some short term volatility that kind of comes with any emerging technology. That is all I have for you guys. I'm going to love and leave you on that note. If you enjoyed the content, like, so appreciate it. So is a comment and I'll catch you all in the next YouTube video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.